Pastor Jeremy, you got the other hand mic? Where'd you go? <laughs> He's bringing it. All right, if you guys would please. Hi, Liz. It's been a while. Hi. <laughs> let's, let's pray for Liz. Father, we, we thank you for this word, Lord, that you've birthed in our sister, Lord. We are just believing, Lord, and expecting the word that flows from her today, Lord, to be all of you and nothing of her. Lord, we are asking for ears to be open to receive whatever you have for us today, and we ask for your blessing upon Liz. We thank you for healing in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for, for what you're going to speak through her today, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive whatever you would have us receive today. We give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. God bless you all. My heart is like, ooh, I didn't expect to be called so soon. I am so happy to be here. I'm grateful to Pastor Greg and um, Tamara for the opportunity, Pastor Fiona, to be able to share with you the exhortation that God has put in my heart. But before I get there, this morning when I woke up and immediately when I opened my eyes and I say hi to Jesus and good morning to the Holy Spirit, he dropped something in my spirit and reminded me of something. And it's cement shoes. And so you probably uh, are wondering what could that have to do with anything. When I gave my life to Christ in 1997, uh, April 6, 1997, um, many moons ago, <laughs> a wonderful walk with the Lord. I remember before I went forward and my father was preaching and he did the altar call, I was a prodigal daughter. I remember standing there and my heart wanted so, so badly to go to the altar. And even though I was a prodigal, I sat in the second row with my mom and it wasn't that far to get to the altar, but I felt like I had cement shoes on. I felt like the weight of the world was on my feet and the enemy was just battling for me to go forward and I remember hearing people praise and worship around me and pray and now I know that the Holy Spirit was interceding for me and praise God that the presence of God his anointing came and broke those cement shoes and I was able to go forward and receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior and never turn back by the grace of God. But the reason that I know that the Lord put that on my heart is because many here today, many that are watching perhaps feel that you have cement shoes on in this season and feel that no matter what you're doing, you can't go forward. And so I want to pray for you today as others prayed for me that day, as the Holy Spirit did intercession for me that day, I would like to do that for you. And if you feel like you have those shoes on today, feel free to get up because we're going to get those broken off your feet today. If you're at work, at home, feel free to get up because they're coming off today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you because it is your anointing that breaks every yoke. It is your word that is spoken today. And I thank you, Lord, that just as you released me, you freed me. Today, you free those that feel like they can't move forward because they have those cement shoes. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus... The hammer of God comes and breaks those cement shoes off your feet. And today, this very day, you will go forward in what God has called you to go forward. You will go forward in what the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. Today is those, the day those shoes are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. When Jesus does it, when your heavenly father does it, he does it well. Go forth in faith. Amen. So today I um, want to start with another story. <laughs> My daughter, Rebecca, who's 23, you know, a youngin, when uh, she is looking on her phone and she's laughing and having a good time, me as a nosy parent, of course, I say, what are you laughing at? Share it with me. And she will come and give me her phone and I will look at her phone. I just realized my pages are out of whack here. Devil is a liar. So when um, I look on her phone, I start squinting. I'm like, I can't see anything. Why is it so dark? And she, hi. 
she just walked in. <laughs> and I look at her phone and I'm like, why is this so dark? And she was like, oh no, I dim the light so that my battery doesn't die. So I have to put it low. I'm like, well, I can't see anything. It's dark, bring up that light. And so God put that analogy in my spirit. I was, I was preparing this message to tell you today that it is time to turn up your light. You have dimmed the light in your life. You have allowed darkness to come in because of circumstances, because of things you believe that God is supposed to be doing and he hasn't done. You have let darkness creep in and the light of God that should be shining through you has been dimmed. But today I tell you, turn up that light. Put in the chat, turn up that light. Send somebody a light bulb, turn up that light today. And so reflect on those questions. What has been dimming your light this season? Where has that darkness come from? You know, we can't blame everything on COVID, right? We can't blame everything that we've been quarantined. We have adjusted our light to the darkness instead of darkness adjusting to our light. And so we have to turn that around today. You know, from day one, literally day one, the light was important to God. He made a point of showing us how important it is. And if we go to Genesis 1, we will read about that day one. Genesis 1 verses 1 to 3. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light was good. And he separated light from darkness. We can see that God did not create, did not form anything until he removed darkness and light was shed on the world. And so when we come into light with God, when we come into partnership with him, when we decide to come alongside him, he will shine that light and start to remove darkness from our life. But we have to surrender that to him. The problem is we tend to want to do things on our own. We tend to listen to outside voices and sources that are not godly. What a great message this weekend about having those godly friendships in our life that can speak life to us. And so we need to decide to surrender our life, to surrender that darkness, uh, and let God work in our life. You know, God change does not look like my change or your change. But when we understand who God is and how much he loves us, then we accept the change that he is doing in our life. We allow him to come in and when that light shines, he starts to form us like he formed this world. He starts to mold us. He starts to put things in place day by day like he did at the beginning. God knew that darkness would always try to creep up on us. God knew from the beginning that he had to make a way out for us. And that's why he sent an even better sun. We had the physical sun that shined on this world, but now we would have the son of God that would come to shine his light on us. And it says in John 8, 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me. So I ask you again, why has your light dimmed? Where has the darkness come from? And the answer to dispel the darkness, the answer to understand how to get rid of the darkness is in that verse. Jesus said, whoever follows me. In some way, in some manner, we have stopped following what God has told us to do. 
we have stopped following his voice. We have stopped following his leading. And because of that, the darkness has crept in. You know, it doesn't happen like a tsunami, right? Little by little, we open a door. We have a thought. We stop praying. Maybe I won't do my devotional today. I won't tune into the service. I, little by little, this adds up, and then we are overwhelmed with darkness. We have to follow him. Remember that I said that Rebecca would dim her light so that she could save battery. But in spite of that, her phone still dies. My phone died, I hear. You know, Not, uh, There's four chargers in the house. There's one in the car. In her grandma's house, in her job, everywhere there's a charger, but her phone still dies. And so if we don't plug in on time, we are going to die. Some of us have found ourselves spiritually dead in this season. We're gasping for breath. We need life support. <laughs> We're at the end of our rope, and it's because we stopped following Jesus. We stopped following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need to plug into his word. In Psalms 119, 105, what does it say? That his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We can't survive. We can't survive without his word. And so we need to draw closer to him. We need to lean into his word and see what he wants us to do what he wants us not to do, right? Because sometimes we need to stay still. I don't know about you, but I want to be doing, doing. Okay, Lord, what's next? Okay, how can I fix this? And, and where do you want me to go? And sometimes it's like, Liz, chill, relax, abide, peace, be still. The way he calmed the storm, he needs to calm our life. But if we don't lean into the light, We won't be able to do that. We need to be plugged into his presence. Some of us think we'll survive with the five minutes we're singing in a car. Your season needs more than that. Your season needs more than that. Some of you think you can survive without a community. You can't survive without a community. Maybe it's time for counseling, freedom, re-engage. Plug, plug, plug the ministries. <laughs> Plug in, plug in, it's time to plug in. We know when we are dying. We're not reacting to things the same. We don't think about things the same. We don't see things the same. Our perspective is so skewed because darkness has us seeing only darkness. We don't see a way out. We don't see that there's any possible way out of our situation, but we need the light. The bad thing is that when we die, we're dragging people along with you, with ourselves. I don't know about you, but I know when I'm low, I feel like I'm dragging my family, my friends. Sometimes people don't want to be around me because I'm too negative. We're not dying on our own. We're taking people with us. We need to draw nearer to God and shine the light that he said that we have. And so just as uh, the earth becomes dark when it turns away from the sun, our lives become dark when we turn away from the Son of God. It was so amazing when Pastor Jeremy read that verse and he said that phrase about turning towards God. And it was in my nose. I was like, wow, God, you really are speaking to us loud and clear that we've turned away from you. We're using other methods and we need to turn to you. Jesus says, follow me. The darkness is what brings the anxiety. The darkness is what brings the depression. The darkness is what brings sickness. The darkness is that brings that just unending cycle of doubt and fear. We need to turn to the light. Jesus says, follow me. We need to listen clearly to what he's saying. We can't expect to that we turn away from the strong tower and expect to be saved. Proverbs 18.10 talks about that strong tower. We can't turn away from our refuge and expect to be strengthened as we find in Psalms 46. We can't turn away from the anointed yoke destroyer and think that we will find freedom. 
Galatians 5.1. We can't turn away from the burden taker and our, expect our burden to be light. Psalm 68.10. We can't turn away from our healer and expect to be healed. Psalms 103, 2-3. And remember that God doesn't only want to heal your body. He wants to heal your heart, your emotions, your mind. I don't know about you, but I just came from through a season where the enemy was just attacking my mind, my body, my emotions. And that was just on a Tuesday. He was at it. He was at it. He was just punching left and right. But God... But God, I stand here only because of God. I stand here strengthened only because of God. I stand here victorious only because of God. And because I know I need to turn to him. I need to reflect on him and let him reflect on me. We can't turn away from him and expect to have the victory that we proclaim that we have, that we sing that we have. We need to turn towards him. Follow him. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. It says, you are, he's talking about us. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine. The world is looking at us to shine. The world is looking at us to reveal the Father to them. The world is looking to see something different. They need the glory of God, and God says that he has given it to us. For it to shine through us. When we don't shine, we don't glorify the Father. We have to understand that it is not about us. It's not about me. When we don't want to get out of bed because we're depressed, we're damaging the kingdom. Get me out of this bed, Holy Spirit. Get me out of this bed, Father. Break me, Lord. Break this yoke from me. We have who to go to. When we're sitting in our bathroom anxious and we don't know how we're going to get to work, what is that? What are our coworkers going to do if we don't arrive to give them a word of healing, to give them a word of comfort, to give them a word of encouragement? Turn to Jesus. Turn to the light. We've allowed darkness to creep in. We've allowed darkness to just sit on our thoughts and sit on our hearts. We're so bound by the darkness. We need to turn to the light. We need to turn to Jesus. <laughs> he is so wonderful and mighty. He can do it. We need to be the light of this world. The Heavenly Father needs us. This world needs us to shine for him. And the thing is, he's so compassionate, so merciful. I don't know uh, about you, but, you know, sometimes I get tired of hearing myself complain. I don't know how he has such mercy and compassion, that love towards me. All right, let's. Let's turn the page. It's time to turn the page, girl. Remember who I am. Remember I love you. Remember I died for you. Remember I have freedom for you. Remember the, the cost of my blood. Let's turn the page. I want to go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2. And some of you need to read this to yourself, look in the mirror, <laughs> and read it over and over and believe it. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness, the peoples. But, but the Lord will rise upon you. And his glory will appear upon you. 
He's letting us know, yes, darkness will come. Yes, the people are dark. Yes, this world is dark. But we have a way out. He's given us his light. He's given us his glory. It's within us. It's not just in heaven. It's not a fairy tale. It's not just for the pastors. It's for you. It's for me. The glory of God rests upon us so that we can shine. So we can shine. Darkness is covering this earth now like, I don't know, my goodness. But we have the answer. Why are we giving in to the darkness? Why are we giving in to the lies of the enemy? We cannot allow ourselves to give up and give in. Let the glory of God shine upon you. The type of glory that will glorify God. It's not about what we do or can do. It's so amazing what he can do through us. And that we can encourage others and encourage this world. There is a way out. There is a light. You don't have to feel so dark. You don't have to see just darkness. There is a way out. You know, arising in a church pew, chair, that's easy. When you're among people that love the Lord, especially at noon prayer where everybody's coming in that one mind and one accord. They're not just checking a box. They're coming here, y'all coming here with a desire and a hunger for the Lord. It's easy to arise among one another. But God wants us to arise in our home. He wants us to shine in our home. With that sick child, with the wayward child, with the crazy husband, with the crazy wife, that's where he wants us to arise when it's difficult, because his light in us is what allows us to do it. He wants to show off. Let him show off in your house. Let him show off what he can do. Let him show off his power through you. Then when the enemy comes and wants to attack and destroy and take peace and take joy in your home, you say, not here, Satan. Not here. I'm shining too brightly. And it's not my makeup. It's the light of God. I'm shining for the Lord. Darkness has to flee. Arise in your job with your coworkers. Too often I hear people when they come to the Lord, oh, I just want to work in a Christian environment. Stop that nonsense. We need the light out there. They need the light in your job. We don't need to save the saved. We need to save the unsaved. Find your place at work with a smile. Let them see you pray over your food because trust me, when they have a need, they're going to come to you. When they see the peace of God on you, they're going to come to you. When they see the joy of God within you, they're going to come to you. Arise at your job. How about arising in those text messages? Lord, Heavenly Father, help us. I had to say something. Did you really? Did you really? <laughs> right? And it comes across so much worse in the text message, right? Recently, somebody I love uh, went on a text war on her phone. And the funny thing is, I'm at home. I work through Zoom. And I'm, I'm a court stenographer, so I'm writing. And I'm looking at the text. And she sends me this text that she's about to respond. I'm like, hi. Oh, my goodness. And I can't take my fingers off the machine. I have to keep writing. And by the time I say, don't send, it was sent. And it started a battle, right? It started a battle. We have to be careful. We need to bring the light. We need to bring the light. And you know what? If you don't, be ready to fall on your sword and apologize. Because if you're the Christian in the situation, if you're the one that's bringing light to the situation, we're going to have to fall on our sword. Be careful with the messages back and forth. How about using the messages to bless somebody and, sh and bring them some light? Some, God, put somebody on your mind and in your heart. Send them a Bible verse. Send them a song. Send them a preaching. Send them a teaching. Send them love. Been there, done that. I'll tell you. Arise in social media, Papa Dios. Oh, my Lord in heaven. You know, I hear sometimes Christians say, I, I, I'm going to get off because I just can't stand what I'm seeing. No, you stay on. Bring the light. Bring positivity. Bring the word of God. Bring what God is telling you to bring. You don't have to argue. There's no need to argue when you have the truth. When you have the truth, there's no argument necessary. No, you don't have to respond. 
You really don't. Just keep scrolling <laughs> if you can't say anything. And let me tell you something. If you can't handle what you're seeing on social media, it's not a social media issue. It's a light issue in your life. It's a light issue in your life. And you need to check your heart and your, your status in God's presence and how you have been seeking him if a mere comment can take you off the deep end. We need the light. We need the light. We should not be worrying about darkness. The darkness should be worrying about us. Because we have the light. We have the light. Can't be always, oh, oh, don't talk about the devil. Let me get, it. no, no. If there's fear, take it to the Lord because we have already won. In case you didn't get the, the memo, we won already. We won already. When you carry the light of God, you walk differently. When you carry the light of God, you speak differently. When you carry the light of God, you think differently. And if that's not happening, get into his presence. Abide in the light of Christ. Get into his presence. We need Jesus. Just as in the beginning, God provided light. Just as in the beginning, God provided uh, a plan to send his son is to let us know we can't do it without Jesus. We can't do it without Jesus. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, let today be the day that you say, I give up. I surrender. I can't do this alone. If you've been abiding in darkness, tell God to come into your life today in a mighty way. Lean into him. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to his call. He's tugging at your heart right now. He's calling your name. Say yes to Jesus today. And if you have found yourself abiding in dark places in your mind, in your heart, you feel it in your soul, today ask the presence of God to overwhelm you wherever you may be, whether it's here, at home, at your job, that the presence of God may overwhelm you and cast out all darkness. Jesus wants to do that to you. It's time to turn up our light. It's time to turn up our light. Let's do that today. Let's make a decision to do that today. And so as the worshipers come forward or whoever's coming next, I want to end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask you that today the word that has been sown will give fruit. The word that has been delivered from your heart will give fruit. I thank you for those that have said yes to your son today. I thank you for those that have decided no more darkness. I thank you for that mother, that father that is praying in their home right now and telling the devil to leave. I thank you for those that are in their uh, cars, at work, and have said yes to you and said, I need to turn up my light. No more walking in darkness. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak clearly to your children and those that become your children today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have broken yokes today. We thank you, Father. We will shine brightly brightly for you today and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.